The U.S. Navy's Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group TRCSG, has entered the disputed South China Sea for the second time this year. Viewers may note that TRCSG first entered the South China Sea in January. The aircraft carrier group is on a scheduled deployment to the U.S. 7th Fleet of Operations, which is the U.S. Navy's largest forward-deployed fleet. The strike group will conduct flight operations with fixed and rotary wing aircraft and maritime strike exercises. TRCSG includes USS Theodore Roosevelt CVN-71, Carrier Air Wing CVW-11, Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Bunker Hill, and Destroyer Squadron 23, which comprises of Arleigh Burke-class destroyers USS Russell, USS Paul Hamilton, USS Preble, USS Pinckney, USS Kidd, USS Rafael Peralta, as well as USS John Finn. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why China kept its distance while the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group entered the South China Sea. Let's get into details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account. USS Theodore Roosevelt is one of the largest warships constructed. It has a displacement of 100,000 tons and an overall length of 332.8 meters or 1,092 feet. To give viewers a perspective, it is about three football fields long. It is powered by two A4W nuclear reactors kept in separate compartments. These power four propeller shafts and can produce a maximum speed of over 30 knots or 56 kilometers per hour. As a result of the use of nuclear power, the ship is capable of operating continuously for over 20 years without refueling and is predicted to have a service life of over 50 years. Practically, it has unlimited range and endurance. USS Theodore Roosevelt, being a Nimitz-class carrier, possesses a multitude of different radars, including electronically scanned array 3D radars. It is equipped with 16 to 24 RIM-7 Sea Sparrow or NATO Sea Sparrow missiles. RIM-7 Sea Sparrow is a U.S. ship-borne short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapon system, primarily intended for defense against anti-ship missiles. Its range is 19 kilometers or 12 miles. Close in weapon CIWS duties are performed by Phalanx and RIM 116 rolling airframe missile. Phalanx CIWS has a 4,500 per minute rate of fire. RIM 116 rolling airframe missiles have a speed over Mach 2. USS Theodore Roosevelt can carry a flight group of more than 60 fixed-wing aircraft, including FA-18 Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, Northrop Grumman's E-2C Hawkeye. FA-18 Super Hornet is a twin-engine, supersonic, all-weather, carrier-capable, fourth-generation, multi-role fighter aircraft. They have a payload of 7,700 kilograms or 17,000 pounds and can carry ground attack weapons as well as air-to-air -air missiles. The versatility of the aircraft can be gauged from the fact that on the first day of Operation Desert Storm, 
two F-18s, each carrying four 2,000-pound bombs, shot down two Iraqi MiGs, then proceeded to deliver their bombs on target. The EA-18G Growler is an Airborne Electronic Attack AEA, aircraft. It's capable of Electronic Attack EA, and Suppression of Enemy Air Defense SEAD, particularly at the start and ongoing early stages of hostilities. Northrop Grumman's E-2C Hawkeye is a carrier-capable AWACS aircraft. It's designed to give long-range warning of incoming aerial threats and as a secondary role of command and control. Rotary aircraft includes variants of Sikorsky MH6. The Arleigh Burke class destroyers and Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers are equipped with a diverse array of weapons for anti aircraft warfare, anti submarine warfare, anti surface warfare, as well as can intercept ballistic missiles through Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System. Arleigh Burke class destroyers and Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers have 96 cells and 122 cells, Mark 41 vertical launch system, respectively. These can be equipped with a choice of different weapons. 1. RIM 66M5 standard SM2MR Block 3B for air defense and anti-ship roll with a range of 103 miles or 167 kilometers and speed of Mach 3.5. 2. RIM 156A SM-2ER Block 4 for anti-aircraft and anti-ship roll with a range of 115 miles or 185 kilometers and a speed of Mach 3.5. 3. RIM-161 SM-3 for ballistic missile defense with a range of 435 miles or 700 kilometers and speed of Mach 10. It can also be used as an anti-satellite weapon. 4. RIM-162A ESSM for an anti-missile roll with a range of 31 miles or 50 kilometers and a speed of Mach 4. It can be quad-packed in a single Mark 41 cell. 5. RIM-174A Standard ERAM or SM-6 for anti-air warfare with a range of 150 miles or 240 kilometers and a speed of Mach 3.5. 6. BGM-109 Tomahawk for land attack. It has a long range of up to 1,550 miles or 2,500 kilometers with subsonic speed. 7. RUM-139A VL ASROC anti-submarine missile with a range of 13 miles or 22 kilometers. It also has eight Harpoon missile launcher for anti-ship roll. Two Mark 32 triple torpedo tubes are present, launching Mark 46 or Mark 50 torpedoes. Two Sikorsky SH-60B helicopters are responsible for anti-submarine warfare. Other weapons consist of long-range naval guns, and a variety of close-in weapon systems. The strike group may have a Virginia-class attack submarine, but it's not clear if, for this mission, any have been deployed. The Virginia-class submarines can defeat enemy submarines, clear sea mines, as well as hit land installations. Carrier Strike Group 9 Commander, Rear Admiral, Doug Verissimo, said, it's great to be back in the South China Sea to reassure our allies and partners that we remain committed to freedom of the seas. Over the course of the strike group's deployment, we've demonstrated our commitment to the rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific region by operating with our friends from Australia, India, Japan, Malaysia, and South Korea. His statement is clearly pointing to Chinese activities in the region. Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group has enormous firepower and can take on the Chinese military head-on. 
While China has improved its military capabilities over the last decade, an American carrier strike group presents a tremendous challenge taking on, which is not in China's favor. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.